Some people told me that they're uncomfortable with IOTA OS because it has ties to Google. How do they know this? Because IOTA includes a firewall app called IOTA that tracks all internet traffic. And apparently IOTA, which is a de-Googled OS, must be outing itself because its own app called IOTA shows that Google actually appears constantly in the internet traffic. So wait, did you hear it's a de-Google phone? So why is it talking to Google? Are there secret communications going on? Is this phone plotting against you in the background? Should you panic? I had to do this video because some people actually use this as a reason to return a Brax 3 phone. And someone with the same mindset would probably return a Pixel with EODOS as well, since the behavior would be exactly the same. And to add to the craziness, I actually showed you in the unboxing video that I can run YouTube, Google Search, Google Translate, and Google Maps on the phone. And I even have it installed on my own phone. And someone made a comment about that in my unboxing video. Well, I must be a fraud because this goes against my teachings and the explanation of all the evil things Google is doing must not be real. Okay, time out. Many of you don't actually understand what a privacy phone is and what it's supposed to do. There's a reason you don't worry about Google on a de-Google phone. This is a safe solution. Find out why. Stay right there. Google is a huge threat. Facebook is the other biggest threat, but that's a separate topic. I've explained this in so many videos, but I do have to keep re-explaining it as people may pick up 5 to 10% of what I'm saying, and the rest is filled in by certain assumptions. Assumptions that lead to an error in judgment. And what I have to re-explain is how Google tracks us all. The architecture of this tracking is so immense and is tied to so much of the internet landscape that it is incredible technology. Basically, it is at the level of surveillance exceeding any three-letter agency of any country. What I've explained over and over is that if you don't understand the Google approach, then you will likely not understand where the privacy threats are and focus on nonsense issues which have little to do with solid everyday threats. I want to make this clear now. The biggest threat to privacy for all of us is Google. The threat to your phone is not some neighbor trying to hack your phone, which you think your neighbor can do, and neither is it the NSO group with the Pegasus hack. The biggest threat to you now is Google. And they are such a huge threat because their unique methodology allows them to track practically every click on the internet. They know what everyone in the world is doing. They have 24 seven location tracking. They can do it if you have an iPhone or an Android. If you have a production phone, then they have a lock on you. I just want to set the record straight so we all know we're using the same hymn book. Why are there traces of Google on a de-Google phone? Don't worry, we'll get there. The Google Kryptonite. Of course, I'm a tech guy, and as this is my expertise, I spend all my time studying the Google architecture and understanding how the data science engineers at the back end collect our data. I study how devices are leaking so much of your personal information every second, including location. The key to Google tracking is the Google ID. Once they get you to enter a Google ID, the tracking begins from either a phone or browser. It will capture this Google ID with every click on the internet. What allowed Google to do this? Google dominates the search industry. 80% of all search in the world is done on Google search. And this dominance comes with power. Most websites want to be known to Google search and want Google search to rank them high on a list. So the result is that every website owner starts off by voluntarily integrating the Google spyware system on their site which benefits the site and allows Google ad payments. And this enables the global spyware to operate. The Google phones. 
Once you understand the Google methodology, then there is a clear way to beat this. Just never enter a Google ID. This is one of the most important features of any Google phone OS. All of them, none of them, whether it be EOD OS or Graphene OS, ties a Google ID to the phone itself. If you have a Google phone, you must realize that you never logged into the phone. On the other hand, if you bought a production phone, then you will always log into Google somehow. And if it's an iPhone, you will also log into Apple. So now they have two identifiers, the Google ID and the Apple ID, and those can then be matched to each other. It goes further than that, but let's just pause here for just a moment. On a Google phone, you never logged in. In the absence of a Google ID on the phone, your internet activities cannot be profiled. Yes, they can have pieces of data tied to some internet behavior, but Google itself does not know who is engaging in this behavior. This is true of anything we do on the internet. For data tracking to occur, there must be an identity to attach the data to. Otherwise, the data has to be thrown away. The technical term is attribution. If you're a data science engineer at Google and you can't attribute the data to a particular user, then you have no identity to match it to. Alternate identities. Now you might think that having no Google ID is enough, but the problem is deeper. On standard production phones, the operating system is able to read alternate identifiers on the phone that can be used as an identity. And this can then later be matched to a Google ID or the alternate identifier can at least allow some sort of attribution to occur. This is why you cannot just use some Samsung Galaxy, not log into Google on the phone and think you're safe. Completely false. Why? Because there are embedded system apps on the phone required by Google as part of Google services to read the various unique identifiers on the phone. And there are many. Examples are the IMEI, the IMZ, the MAC address, advertising ID, and lately a more scary hidden threat is the UUID of the Titan M chip on tensor based pixels. No identity phones. A privacy phone to meet that label, in my opinion, has to allow no identities to leak from the phone. So in this regard, a Google phone has some really different advantages. There are no Google system apps running secretly on the phone to capture the unique settings like the IMEI, MZ, and MAC address. And a Google phone has no advertising ID. And how do we know it can't capture this information? It's because Google itself put in code to lock out third parties from taking these identifiers from a phone. And that code has been around a long time now. Google wanted to make sure that only system apps have access to the identifiers on a phone. But a D Google phone has no Google system apps. So they do not have embedded code to read the identifiers. On a Google phone, a Google app like YouTube has no special rights from any other app. And because the operating system of a Google phone is open source, programmers like me or our team can actually read the code. We can verify that Google did not leave any secret little programs running there that can send little snippets of identity information. In open source, that will not happen. Now, while I'm confident that a Brax 3 will not have any unique identifier that will out the phone as being from a specific user, unfortunately, newer pixels, specifically the Pixel 6, 7, 8, and 9, are using a Tensor chip with a built-in security module called the Titan M chip. This Titan M chip validates certificates through Google. So this is an identity leak. I don't know the extent of the leak or how frequently it performs this Google validation, but it is a danger. The other part is that because it is actually a separate module, it is not directly observable from the programming. It's one of these black boxes that only Google knows about. So be careful with this. While I don't know the severity of this problem yet, it is clearly an identity leak. And the whole point to privacy is to hide identity. Back to the EOD firewall app. Given this background, let's go back to the EOD OS and look at the EOD app. This app is basically a firewall app and you can control which apps are able to use the internet and which domains it can access. 
So if you look at it, you will see that regardless of what you do, if you use other apps, you will find that your phone will talk to Google. Why is that? First of all, let's make it clear. As I said, Google is tied to everything on the internet, so that is inevitable. But one thing I know that unless you circumvent what I've said are features of a no identity phone and you do not log into Google anywhere on the phone on any app, then it remains safe. But the reason you will never get away from Google is that every app is created using Google tools. All apps on Android connect to Google by default. It is part of the app creation process. For example, apps will need to have notifications. Well, notifications go through Google. They have to. And that will be apparent when you look at any Google access to Firebase dot google dot com firebase handles notifications apps report telemetry information that normally would go to google then there's google ads when you go to any website that website will talk to google as i already said it has google analytics and ads that runs using javascript on your phone so when you go to a website the google code is inserted into your phone temporarily. Thus, your phone will be the one to talk to Google, and that's why Google is able to read the Google ID if it's available. So because of this, of course, you will expect to see Google tied to everything you do on the internet. Simply having any app with notifications will add Google into the mix. Even if you used only a browser and no apps, you will find Google in every website, as I already said. So if you think you can escape it directly, you cannot. It is impossible. But these are solved because these Google connections are handled via spoofer apps. The main spoofer for notifications is MicroG, which is installed on EODOS. The other spoofer is Aurora Store, which spoofs the Google Play Store. MicroG makes apps think they're talking to Google, but MicroG is actually a middleman that removes identifying information. And the same with the Aurora Store. Is this a problem? As I already stated, none of this matters at all. It doesn't matter that Google is constantly being called by various apps because there's no Google ID anyway. Your phone appears with no unique identifier. They'll know it is Android. They may know it's a Brax 3 or a Pixel. But which one out of many? They will not get that directly from the phone unless you screw up. So enjoy the internet in peace. About the only thing you can do to add to your comfort level is to use a VPN. VPNs hide the IP address from Google and it is an identifier, though not necessarily at the device level. How do you screw up? Yes, believe it or not, you can still screw up. You can accidentally reveal your Google ID, though none of this is permanent. Let's say you installed some Google app and logged in. It means you just opened your wallet to the internet police and had Google inspect your ID. You just got zucked. Once the Google ID is embedded in there, obviously the app will keep transmitting the Google ID. You can use Google apps that do not require a login. Again, without a login, you are using their resources, but you are not paying for it with your data. They will entice you to log in, but you only win the game when you do not log in to Google. And my fear in an app is that once you log into the app, even if you delete it, that the Google ID will be stored somewhere in there and can be retrieved by Google later. This is a fairly simple programming task to do, so I assume it will be done. This is why I would never tell you to use a Graphene OS sandbox feature, for example. Nonsense stuff, not safe to log in. If you need to log into Google, you can do so on a browser. And then after you log in, expect the tracking to continue at least of your IP address until you clear cookies. I explained this in another video, but I've actually duplicated this behavior so I know how Google is tracking on a browser. At least you can clear cookies on a browser. If on a phone, I probably would never use Chrome as a browser. Use some other browser like Chromium, Brave, Firefox, and so on. The reason is that I'm not certain that Chrome will not store the Google ID if you logged in once, even if you clear cookies. If you already ran Chrome, you can always delete the app and use something else. Fortunately, this is not a long-term threat. It doesn't compromise the phone. Summary. 
So is there anything to fear from all that data that EOD is showing that you are interacting with Google on the phone? No. Google has massive control over the internet, so you cannot escape them. But they have their kryptonite, and it is in our hands, which hold the Google ID. In a way, I'm proud that we can overcome their controlling ways with these solutions I teach, but they are definitely the biggest opposition to privacy. Folks, come join us at our social media platform, BraxMe, where you can discuss these topics and even more. And by the way, currently, we are offering a special on our Bytes VPN service with worldwide servers. We are running a special, which is $64.50 a year for two years. That's absolutely an outstanding price. So take advantage of it while it is available. Thank you for watching and see you next time.